I love having old computers. I love playing games, I love experimenting with old hardware, and I love experimenting with old software. There is one thing I want to add to this setup that I think would really complete it. And of course, I'm talking about dial-up internet. Now, dial-up internet, for those of you who don't know, is the way of connecting to the internet before you had your DSL, before you had your cable, before you had your fiber internet. This is what you would use. So what is dial-up? How does it work? So let's say that you have a computer with a dial-up modem and a phone line. Your computer will dial a number that will be answered by a server, and then those two computers will start transferring data between each other. And that usually sounds like this. So that is how people connected to the internet from the early 90s to even the early 2000s. The goal for this video is to include that into my retro setup, and honestly the results are really nice. So before anything, brief history lesson on dial-up. What you are listening to right now is pretty much the first ever version of dial-up. Named Bell 103 after the modem that this standard was based off of, the Bell 103 modem was the first actual dial-up modem available to consumers, released in 1963. Though it was not the first dial-up modem, the first dial-up modem was released in 1958 and it was called the Bell 101. Though it was really only made for teletype machines and high-end business systems. And Bell 103, or 300 baud, was actually well used into the 1980s with acoustic coupler modems. Although, it's the 80s, the internet really didn't exist yet and people would kinda just use this to dial into bulletin board systems. Bulletin board systems, or BBSs, were a place for users to log in and chat, and also for users to upload and download files. And back then, companies had BBSs that you can dial into to download patches for maybe a game or to get news. And also, some BBSs actually had games you can play with other users logged in. Fast forward to 1994, and the internet actually started to become a thing, with the likes of CompuServe and America Online alike. And the way dial-up works has changed a lot since the 80s as well. That is V34, honestly one of the revisions of dial-up that I find to be one of the most popular, but not the most popular. Capable of transferring data from 28.8 kilobits per second to 33.6 kilobits per second. V34 brought features like better echo cancellation, and it automatically adapts to poorly maintained phone lines. This standard released in 1994, and it was used all the way up until 1998, where the legendary V90 standard came out. And this is probably by far the most popular version of dial-up, and with V90 comes faster speeds. This is where 56k came from. V90 had a 56 kilobytes per second download speed, but it used V34 for uploads, maxing out at 33.6k for uploads. V92 came out a year later in 1999. The only clear differences from V90 to V92 is V92 can connect faster using a quick connect feature, and it added support for 48 kilobit per second uploads instead of these 33.6k uploads. Although V92 wasn't really used that much because V92 wasn't actually a significant upgrade from V90 and so most ISPs just never implemented support for it. Okay, so history lesson over. Time to talk about how we're actually going to get dial-up internet into this room. We have two ISPs that come into this house. We have AT&T and we have Xfinity. Xfinity is for other things, but that Xfinity does actually have landline. And it's not voice over IP, it's actually just a traditional telephone line, except it's just going through coaxial. So that kind of got me thinking. The modem is on the other side of the house, but it's on the same side of the house as the telephone network access point. So what if I just routed the cable from the back of the modem, out of the kitchen window, and to the telephone access point, and from the access point, route the telephone cable under the house and to my room? Sounds actually not very easy but i've been doing the preparations for about six months i already routed the phone cable underneath the house i don't have any footage of that sorry about that and i have it connected at the crawl space so i have a cable coming from the telephone access point going under the house and going to my room now all we have to do is get the cable connected at the telephone box so my tools are here and that's the nick okay so this is the cable that i fed through the kitchen how did i do that i just poked a hole in the screen it's fine no one's gonna notice that oh Fuck motherfucker, 90 volts, it shocks. Okay, so here's the plan. 
right here is where all the telephone line come in. I already did the hard part off camera, so all I did here is match up these, these red and green contacts with the red and green contacts on the actual phone line that I just fed through here. This is not the phone line that I fed through the kitchen. This is a different line entirely. This is just a different cable that I wanted to grab. I fed it through here. This is the bottom line, so it feeds in through here. Here in the NIC, the telephone line to my room was already connected, so I didn't even have to go fishing for it like I really thought I was. I brought a laptop out here, and this is the reason why I brought a laptop out here. So I can take this port out and test the, the connection before I actually terminate it. All right, so for the cable hot swap idea, I'm just gonna take one of these and plug one part of the line into there and the other part of the line into here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use Hyper Terminal and just quickly test the connection here. Uh, what's a random phone number I can dial? Just a random number, I don't even know what it is, but we'll just dial it and see, see what, what it is, see if it works. Well, yep, all right, that's sick. Okay, so we know the line is working. That is literally all I needed this laptop for. Oh shit. Okay, so now all I need to do is figure out how to cram all these wires and components in here. I have a solution. All right, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go grab a little cable tie. I'm just gonna wrap the entire, like, all the cables up in a bundle. Fuck. Oh yeah, this is gonna work fine. Like that. I'll just feed this part up through here. Okay, I'm just gonna feed this up through here. So, oh, and that's, that's my room. Okay. That's good enough. That's, that's good enough. You know, if it stops working, then I'll know why. Pack all this stuff behind here and call it a day. Wow, it really did get really cold out here really fast. <coughs> you know, that's, that's actually fine. I, that doesn't look that bad. When I'm done being lazy, I should probably just like cut that cable and make it so it's actually like length that makes sense, but we'll be fine for now. Oh, time to see if this shit will work. Okay, so I could just pick up the handset to see if it's working, but nah, shit's boring. We're gonna try dialing into something. Okay, uh, dial. Oh, sh Uh... I mean, it's working. Oh my god. Okay, well, I mean, it worked, but... So an earthquake happened right when I was testing the line, and because of the earthquake, I was hearing a bunch of cracks in the line. So I went back outside, and after I ensured that everything was alright, and working properly, I came back to test it again. We try again. Okay, I mean, it's working better. Oh, fuck, bro. My terminal isn't big enough. I'm just gonna copy the number, and we're gonna go into a better terminal, my favorite terminal. Bro, what is going on? Okay, whatever. Oh, never mind, it froze the entire computer. What the fuck? All right, well, switching over to Windows 95 here. Let's see, is the computer still awake? Oh, you bet it is. Here we go. So this modem's a bit iffy, the internal modem in this uh, computer. You have to like raise the head, the handset before you can actually dial. So really quickly, I'm gonna hit the dial and then raise the handset. Oh, I failed. No dials, oh shit. Here, actually I have a better idea. Easy. Hello? 
log in. <laughs> there we go, I mean, I'm logged in. So um, over here, Windows 98 is still uh, still struggling. I'm not really sure why, but I'm just gonna give it the old reset button. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's fine. So uh, let's just try to connect to the internet with Net Zero on Windows 95. Windows 95 can connect to the internet. Sure thing. We go now. Oh, okay, well, we know what to do for that, so I just gotta go in here and edit some of the network settings. Dial-up adapter. There we go. We do need TCP IP for the dial-up adapter, though, so... TCP IP. There we go, TCP IP, dial-up adapter. That's what we wanted. <laughs> Shift. Here's a box copy of Windows 95, graciously gifted by my homie Ben. And I just put literally all of my Windows 95 discs and stuff in here, so... Yes, yes, go. Please go. Okay, now for the actual moment of truth. You are logged on. <laughs> yes. Okay. 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 Dude, calm down. We want Google. Okay. No fucking way. Guys, we're on Windows 95, okay? Using dial up internet. And I and I'm on I, I'm on the internet. Okay, so I'm gonna go to the old net really quick and because the old net is basically just the only really website you can go on. So there's this search engine called AliWeb. I think it was the first search engine, but it's still up and it still uses Web 1.0. Anybody can go to it. Just go to AliWeb.com and uh, yeah, <laughs> it's here. September 11th, 2001. That's definitely not what the day is. Oh, what the fuck? Alien conspiracy? Government cover-up? Why did the US government put one on the moon? That is crazy. But yeah, I mean, it, there's just a bunch of links to a bunch of websites. So now let's switch over to Windows 98 and see if we can get stuff working over there. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do here is just hop right into the terminal. Okay, let's uh, see if it works. You know, I've never actually used this terminal before, so I'm probably gonna have to adjust the settings. Pretty sure we're on COM1 for this one. Okay, let's go. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So then I think the only thing we actually have to do for Windows 98 is see if we can connect to the internet via dial-up. So this thing is already on the internet. I have Firefox installed on this thing and it is connected to the internet via ethernet. Now I can go to Google. I'm, I'm searching Google for Google, yeah. So I'm just gonna go ahead and unplug the ethernet cable. All oh, right, I don't even have like a client to connect to the internet on here for. So I'll be using my trusty netzero.exe floppy disk. Oh shit, there's MS-DOS on here too? What was I doing? 
Ned zero, there we go. That was that was pretty quick. Okay, so here's the thing. None of the dial-up access numbers in California work. So the area code that I have found that still has the most working dial-up numbers is 207. Like all of these and add. Okay, next. We want disable call waiting, dial star 70. There we go. First one don't work. Hold on, what is the number that I'm using on the Windows 95 machine? 795-1406. Okay. All right, let's actually see if we can connect this time. It's just sitting there now. We're gonna restart the... Oh. Oh, never mind. It, the modem speaker was muted. That's why I thought that there was nothing going on. Okay, well, let's go to Google really quick. Let's search myself on Google. Oh, 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 oh my God. All right, yeah, 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 that's, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Okay, so we did get internet working. It's downloading features. So that's gonna be about it for this dial-up adventure. If anybody wants to see me make more just videos about dial-up, please comment your ideas down below. Like if you liked it, dislike if you hate dial-up internet or if you hate me. I got some more vids coming up in the future, so stay tuned.